I made this video so that, um, that we have got a little bit more extra inf information to use in the Belladonia because I don't want people to be wasting time like I did trying to find out how to use it. Um, there's nothing bad going towards Timicom or Belladonia. The, to the, the finger jointer is a very good tool and it does a very good job of what it's supposed to do. Um, but I do believe that over time that cutters and manufacturers of cutters are changed so they don't include this in their videos and all this so it's a bit blasé what they do say about setting the depth of cut on a, a, a blind finger joint uh, using their um, uh, router bits so just listen to the whole video and you'll understand a little bit if you want to know a little bit more about the thickness um, the proper depth of the router I can surely tell you all I can say the, the depth of cut on the piece of wood you're doing is 8 mil and you can even if your thickness of wood is 18 mil or 20 mil or inch uh, or 30 mil which I think is the maximum it's only 8 mil that you can go on there and there's no other router that will um, you can use other than this router bit I just must really emphasize this to you all okay thank you enjoy the video good day everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to look at the Belladonia uh, finger jointing uh, gadget which is just down here we'll take it down experience there unless they go and do the course at where this play, uh, where this jig is sold. Um, of course we'll be using our router there you can see in the middle. What I'm trying to do here is to give you the information in regards to what they don't in their videos for the Belladonia uh, jointing uh, tool. I find this is the most important uh, uh, point is that you shouldn't know about your machine and they don't seem to dwell on it at all. Okay without further ado let's get into this eh. Okay the first of all uh, the first thing I would make is where you mount your Belladonia join or any of these uh, jointing jigs I would make sure that you got something to catch the wood as you undo this because you got one in here you got one in over there as you'll uh, find out as you get more better at what you're doing uh, when making boxes and when you unloose it doesn't matter how steady you go all this Sorry, uh, sorry, when it's time when you lose it, no matter how steady you go, okay, one will always fall in there. Yeah, maybe uh, you might be lucky and catch one every now and then if you watch out how you do this. But to stop your shit like this happening, breaking pieces of wood, you know, it's snapped off. Look, bang. With another piece. It's useless. Here's the other piece here. Here's the other piece. Right, that, that uh, uh, what happens if you don't have one of those things? So I made up one of those. That's it. Bang, first thing. Done. That saves you your job. And what I do is I've, I've maybe if I point you over to this one over here and get you a little bit closer. I'll leave it. I've got these pegs, but I've different holes, different lengths where I think I'll make boxes and all that. 
so they can sit down further, then you can load, offer your piece of wood up underneath there, and when you happen to undo that and it falls, it's not going to um, hit the ground. It probably, only, it's probably says a depth of probably about that much underneath for clearance for it to drop, and you know you're not going to damage too much, especially if it's just falling into wood. You can put a bit of sponge in there if you want to, but it could fill up with a bit of sawdust or something like that, or shavings. That would uh, work just as well. But yeah, that's a very useful thing to have. That's the first thing off the mark. Ne next thing they don't discuss in the um, in the uh, video online on YouTube is the spaces. Now these spaces are here. There's one there and there's one here. And they've got to be offset. This is half inch, so you've got to offset them half inch. That's all well and good. You set up one and all this. Then you find out that all these things here are in the road. You can get to this one screw. Right, that's all right. But you can't get to the other one because it's stuck up behind or half covered by the template. Bad. All they have to do is just machine it a little bit like that and solve the problem. And likewise down here, you can't get at the screws to do it. And even in the video, you see he's got his Phillips screwdriver bending there. What you've got to understand, I've been looking at these videos on YouTube for this, the Belladonia in regards to setup and all this. And it got to a situation when I was cutting my, uh, uh, cutting these uh, dovetails, which are not through th dovetails, because there you are. There's the dovetail come through for this side, and that's how you do it. And a machine like that sit on top. Right, that's how you do every setup. Sorry, uh, here's something like that. Sorry, let's see how it goes. Have I got this wrong? That's right. Yeah, that's how it goes like that. It's nice and level. That's it. That's how it goes. In. Then you turn it up. And push it in. You just think, oh, it might be tight. No, just look at that. Look at the fit. Just push with your fingers go. I got a little bit proud because I made this one this morning quickly so I could work on a little bit of a few principles. Uh, I can show these you guys how to go, but you know, if you want to loosen that off, all you have to do is just wriggle that around a little bit and it'll, it'll fall in there. Enough to give you a glue gap and everything. That's fine. That, that, that bit there is fine. Another thing they talk about is that uh, wood that you can use in uh, this jig. Well, with the uh, the only the only um, router bit that they say will work is this one here, which is. Uh, DT143BQ. Now, made by Tukwata. Okay, uh, who they are, I don't know, pretty Taiwanese company. And, um, and Timicom, uh, who sell this product only. Uh, it's the only place you can buy these cutters. Well, you can get them online, but through Timicom, through eBay and all that, through Timicom. But you probably pay more if you don't you go straight to the shop. So there you are. Okay. That's the only cutter that you can use when you're doing this. So it doesn't matter on the thickness of the wood. is up to an inch and a half or something like that. Uh, which leads on to the, nut, nut, the other thing, which is setting the depth of cut. Now they say in the video, this is really was puzzling. I had to go back with this jig all set up with the cut in there. I'm just lucky that I had a technician who first went into designing or helping to design uh, 
how to use this belladonia. And he was there, and he's not there every day of the week at the shop. And uh, anyway, I walked in there, and he said he'd take home and show me what to do. And it was just fantastic what he said, and I learned very quickly. And actually, he sent me uh, around depth up in 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 a shop. And uh, I don't know if you can see that. After you've done this, uh, marked it out all nice and square, that square there, that face there is square, so it's everything's running what you reckon is pretty good, right? And cross your fingers there, it's nice and smooth across the top two surfaces there. Fiddle around, you'll get it. That means this one, you know, getting this will be squared up nicely. Your piece of wood will be squared. Don't have to worry about it. Make sure it's square off your, your jig, right? Right. Okay, now we've cut our uh, uh, dovetails and uh, then we take them out, which you see me do half a dozen times already, but this is a demonstration piece. By the way, this wood is teak and you've got to be very careful with it, make sure you're with your breathing apparatus and all that because just it's just like powder comes out there and it's supposed to be not very good for you and could create cancer. Anyway, let's say we'll do it again. See what it fits like. Just, I just love that fit. The fit is just beautiful in it. Now we've got a little bit of height matter here and all this. Okay, that's all right because the next step we're going to talk about is... How do we get it closest to the top here and all that? Well, that's that's where you're sitting and all this, and, um, and it's probably dropped down by about half a mil, might be a little bit more. Okay, through there, but there's a reason why that because I've made adjustments to this thing, um, uh, I've made a little bit deeper because here I have a box. I have a box like this. Mm -hmm. Beautiful joints all the way around. There's about 0.25 uh, of a gap on there. A quick sand up and all that will be beautiful. I'm really happy about that. So I'll put that up here. And uh, we'll move on. And by the way, if you want to get a... Uh, uh, say uh, to loosen the joint you decrease the depth of cut and to tighten the joint increase the depth of cut so your juicy spot let's talk about the juicy spot is set at eight mils okay so to tighten the joint uh, the joint increase the depth of cut okay so you take your cutter down and then to loosen it okay you come up and Obviously, you all saw that in my first, uh, well, some of my first uh, videos I've done when my depth of cut was not eight mil, it was four, four and a half mil. And you can see how sloppy it is. It was very disappointed that I couldn't do that, but it doesn't matter, you know. They do, I must warn you, they do say that they can cut uh, eight mil. Well, uh, eight mil wood. Well, if you look here, I can't look here. This is all covered up at the moment. Now, where are we looking? There's another piece of wood. The other piece of wood here. Okay, if you look here, you see this? That's about one mil. One mil from there to there. One mil from hitting this here. I say eight mil. 8mm is the thickness of wood you can go to. This is 9mm. This is 9mm piece of wood and we've got 1mm thickness. So how close to this paintwork will we be going? You probably can do it, and I suppose they do say that you can put a, a very thin shim, say, 
a one mil or two mil uh, shim underneath and cut uh, eight mil stuff. There is a way you can do that. And you set it all up, but it's fiddly. You don't want to be doing that. So whenever you use your wood, go no less than nine mil thickness of wood, sorry. Right, now, um, the next thing. Okay, just move this over there out of the light a bit, out of the bright light anyway. Okay, right, so we cut our four pieces and all this, then we establish which are the ends we want to be, uh, uh, that no dovetail will, uh, will show, because the, don't forget these are called blind dovetail. If we look here, there's no uh, dovetail showing through there, but there is on the side. Well, it's a half dovetail or blind do uh, dovetail, and you use that for draws. You know, uh, so that's your depth of cut. That's where you, I got this little bit around, sunny piece of wood I found and stuck it together that I had left over. And that's where, that's the side of your drawer, and those dovetails are exposed. So that's how it goes so forth anyway the next thing we do is we number number it and put markings on it like here i've got draw front inside make sure you put that two right sorry okay we mark out the whole uh, of, the, of the box, um, how we would like it, and keep an idea how we, we fit it. And this way, we don't move them how, how they are. You see the printing stand there, I've got bottom, that's the bottom, four, four back, bottom, three back, three right hand side, bottom, two right hand side, and this is the draw front. So we start off with the draw front, okay, and then we pick it up. I just put this um, camera back a bit. We pick it up and I get hold of number one position because we always go start to the left hand side. And we place it in there. Make sure that these masking tape markings don't fold up. And incidentally, I've allowed for the depth of that uh, thickness of that masking tape. And that's what we do. Okay. Bang, we cut it all up, okay. Now we, this is the next thing, we have to do the other end. Alright, the other end. Alright. So if we look, the bottom is up against the back edge here. So when we do the other side, we're going to transfer it over there so it's facing there, okay. So the bottom's up against this edge. So we do that, we take this, loosen this one off. a little bit too short but who cares and we get hold of it and we come around like that bang so the bottom's up against that point there and we get hold of this we don't well we can Four, okay, which is number four, which is right here. 
I can't see that. I'll bring you around a bit. That's number four. There's four back. There's four. Okay, and we put that in there. And there we have it. It's all matched up. That's how I cut it. And, you know, and we go around, that's just how we do it. One end we do it this side, one end we do it over this side. And then you get a perfect fitter. Any mistakes. That's why we put those marks on there. So what you do is you take it out and you put it back to where you got it from when you're finished. Okay. So we cut number four on that side, so number three, you would think it would come over this side. Will it? No, it doesn't. Because that bottom has got to be against that face there. So that's how you solve your problem. Right? But if we were to do the other end, the bottom has got to be against that side there. Right? So we're doing number four back. So we slip that in. on the inside. There you go. Draw front and then we look around. So that's the draw front there, okay? There. 
there. Right? Do you see any dovetails on there? No, there isn't. They're on the sides. Okay? Now, this is another. They sort of discuss, but they don't go there. But this is what people are looking for to make sure they've got a good belief of what's happening, what they're seeing. And um, so there you have it. You know, we've got to we match all our things up. Look for one. Look for one. Whack it in. Don't. <laughs> and it comes out two layers of fit, uh, fit and sort of sloppy, as I'll show you now. Okay, first uh, half blind dovetail they've ever done. Um, so I see the finish, which is nice, you know, it's brilliant, nice new uh, tip and all that, no trouble at all. So let's see what the test fit's like and see what the alterations we have to do. It's probably one thing I didn't do, I didn't mark these pieces of wood I suppose to and wood, don't worry about that. Because we know how it goes back together while we work it out. Right. Look nice. Can you see that? Looking like a nice uh, joint. Don't forget this is a half dovetail. Blind dovetail. Then we take this one off. Okay, we'll put that piece back down there, that one there. And we'll slide that one through. Now, the whole idea of this, well, we'll just give that a little bit of a, a sand. Just sand that off there. We've got to get this piece here. I think that's the piece, yep. Okay, and then we've got to fit it in. Now, it's got to be able to fit in there and it's got to be flush. Now, that's not bad for the first effort. Um, the gap is a little bit wide, so what's that mean? Uh, well, maybe I'll have to get, I don't know, you can see the gap is a little bit wide here, and it's sitting a little bit proud. I would rather like it to go deeper. So what we've got to do is we've got to back this frame off, and go back there, and this, and that piece there, We'll cut deeper, so we'll put that back in there. Now this is where it comes to a bit of a problem. Because we've got stops here. Because we've got stops here. Uh, we aren't going to lose our position of our wood. Okay? So if we do that, if we, sorry, put that in there, which you had to, do in the first instance, that's it. So, just before we go, I'll have a look again. This is the top piece. That's a lovely fit. No one can argue about that, eh? It's beautiful. And uh, the guy who, uh, oh, you know, working on accuracy, the, the technician who showed me how to set this up there, well, he, he wanted to set that for me and all this. He uses the carpenter's rules. So <laughs> and he whacked on eight mils there, you know. I thought that won't work, but I'll come out and I'll try and see what happens because it's a good starting point is fine if I have to go deeper or shallower with the cut, which now then 
makes a video on Timbercon made a lot more sense to me now because it's all filled in the gaps and all this about angles and all this. And where I had tried once to, I, I, I took it down about another two mils on a piece of scrap wood like this and, you know, in depth of cut this way and, and, and it seemed to not improve. So um, that's when I just went barley's put my hands up in the air and walked away and I said, I don't know what to do. But I, as I said, I rang and uh, I'm glad I did. Anyway, um, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, the depths of cuts. I don't know if you can see if I can see this through here. We've got two pieces of paper, see-through paper, with exactly the same drawing with a couple of lines so I can line it up. Yeah, I think you'll be able to see it. I'll see if I can get it far enough away to. Right. So if we uh, don't take the cutter down, down far enough, okay, if you can see through there, I've got all my lines marked up, there's a gap between that side to that side, that side to that side. So this was, was, was what was happening. I wasn't going deep enough with the, the cut, so I had a sloppiness. Now, if I, uh, uh, by showing this method, if I brought it up, okay, it would have been tighter. And it, it, in virtual sense, this is what uh, you have to do to find out the depth of cut, so you would have to play around. Because on their movie, they don't tell you the depth that you're supposed to go down, maybe because when the video was made, there was some other company was making the... Uh, uh, cutter and maybe it was a little bit different to the one they got now uh, made by Torquato or whatever their name is so um, yeah we'll put that down what else can we talk about ok so we'll just look back to here when you're setting up your piece of wood and all your offsets and all this and you use your chisel you slip that underneath there and your piece of wood goes up again there and this piece of wood comes up here okay um, then you level off these two pieces then you set your marker how do you get back into those screws okay well there's only one way undo these this this bolt here and that bolt it they don't say that don't that don't actually say that okay and the other thing is once you t uh, set your depth of uh, of uh, this, which is 3 mil, which is 3 mil, you have to set it onto your piece of wood. Let me quickly show you. There's a piece of wood there. Can we see? Okay, I a little bit closer might be a good idea. See that the pencil right a three mil gap here. But what you got to watch out for these things <laughs> well, they're probably made by uh, machinery, but sometimes you get a little bit of a bit of movement here. Now, to me, I don't know what that's saying to you, but that is moving. throwing your set, out, set up out. Now that's 3 mil there, I know that's 3 mil, so whenever you set these things, get your play and push it backwards, make sure it's get pushing backwards. What distance you set here and to there must be exactly the same up this side here and all this. As you find out when you come to do this box later, okay, and I'm going to go through with, with you, um, I won't be doing any cutting, so we can all hear what we're doing, I've already cut them. Right, so, uh, um, you'll get the idea what's going on here. Okay, anyway, you set your depth of cut, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's whatever it was. And you tighten these and tighten these and you put all your template back. Because these are self-centering screws here, you won't affect your, your setup. And, of course, uh, once you've got your distance from there to there and all this, you can tighten up your, 
Yeah, what's the name? Once you've set your depth of key on your piece of wood, depth of this uh, template, sorry, on the wood, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and you lock it in here, okay, nice and firm. You don't have to worry about unscrew these things here, put your template aside so you can get to your adjustments and tighten those. Okay, that's your first thing here. You set your piece of wood up there, square it off, make sure this is square, then put your piece of wood up against there, and then half half an inch offset, which is use a half inch chisel, you put in there to offset your piece of wood. So you get a difference of reading like so. If I can get this, this is getting a bit small, this piece of wood. I should have it the opposite way around. You can see the difference here. Right, and you get it in the middle of your finger here. Okay, that that's it. And make sure that you. Oh, I don't even think that'll tighten. So short. Make sure you bring your piece of wood down. Just nip it off like that. Push it down, and then tighten. That's nice and level across there. Beautiful.